Three months ago, I made a video showing my CS50 final project that was powered using AI. Following that, I remade the project and then remade it again. I used OpenAI to make my own AI model for the website. I redesigned the user interface using Figma and deployed it live on the web using Amazon Web Servers. Here's how I turned my final project into a startup. The first version of my project used GPT-3, which is essentially a dumbed down version of ChatGPT, but it didn't perform very well at really specific tasks. So in my example, making running training plans. So to fix this, I had to create my own fine-tuned AI model. Now to do this, you need a data set containing lots of example questions, and answers and for my example that was making lots of running training plans so for the first iteration i wrote 100 training plans by hand i then used my data set to fine tune the best possible language model available on openai create fine tuning model there we go it's uploaded but that's it now it's fine tuning and it's as simple as that uh wrong it turns out because there's so many variables when making things like running training plans you need more like 500 data points not 100 create fine tuning model <laughs> it's as simple as that uh... there are 300 training plans this is the model i've got it looks like i've got a better plan with a better structure again as you probably guessed there shouldn't be any of this we're only interested in this bit so the reason i was getting all this waffle in my answers is because i just hadn't structured my data correctly like i was using different units like miles and kilometers in my answers and then using different words which meant the same thing like recovery and recoveries which all just distracts the ai from the key differences when it's being taught so yeah i then had to go through and restructure 300 training plans create fine-tuning model <laughs> thankfully that worked my fine-tuned model makes better training plans than gpt3 and even chat gpt so great success but the reality is that ai costs every time i make a request from my fine tune model it costs three cents which makes it completely unviable on a free website and it also costs at least ten dollars to fine tune a decent sized model you do get eighteen dollars of free credit when you sign up for an account using OpenAI, but as you can imagine you can burn through that so check out my previous video where i showed you how you can get unlimited free credit the CS50 course doesn't really cover web design and CSS in great detail. I mean, as you can see from the first version of my website, but rightfully so, because it is a massive headache. I did all my web design in Figma. Figma allows you to easily design your own website and then it will generate the CSS code for that website. And then all you have to do is copy that code into your own website file uh, and bam, you've got yourself a website uh, and it's free. It's so good, in fact, that Adobe just paid $20 billion for it. Uh, but you can get it for free. I don't know if anyone told you, you can get it. <laughs> A cool thing about Figma is the Figma community section. This is where I got this dashboard design from. Uh, I then changed this dashboard design to make the second iteration of my website, which ended up looking like this, which, as you can see, is more or less a completely different website. So. I think for this one, it would have been quicker just starting afresh. For what is the third iteration of my website, I went for like a neo-brutalism theme, which is the, the hot design trend right now in 2023. Uh, this was the first design that I did, a bit naff, and then I went to like this fully Forrest Gump style one, and I was like, yeah, we're, we're getting somewhere, but not quite. And then I got, got this version, and I was like, right, I'm gonna stick this theme, but I'm gonna make it a bit more modern, sharpen up the edges a bit, and then it ended up with this, which I then went on to use my final website design. So I did all my web development in Chrome. So I used CSS to make sure that all the different elements were positioned correctly, so that when you stretch the website like this, they all move relative to each other correctly. But then when I opened it on Safari, it looked like this. Things were just completely all over the shop. But then if I opened it on mobile in Safari, things look like this and I, I kid you not you literally could not press a single button it turns out i was having this issue because i was using absolute positioning and for some reason chrome and safari interpret that completely differently so i switched over to relative positioning and that works this is the kind of thing that makes css a massive headache and then i used javascript to add some functionality to the website so when you refresh the page, for example, it automatically selects the first form. And then when you fill in valid values in the form, it goes green. And then when you generate a training plan, it takes you down to the bottom of the page where the training plan is. To turn your locally hosted project into a live website like this, you need to host it on a server. And that's where AWS comes in. With my website working fine, all that was left to do was deploy it. And uh, 
That'll be pretty straightforward, won't it? I won't have any issues with that. Sure. Oh, come Like most of you that did CS50, I built my application using Flask. So when you deploy an app using Flask, you need a file called requirements.txt. Uh, and within that, you've got all the libraries that you use. Like you can see, I've got the, the CS50 library here. But for some reason, like five of the libraries just wouldn't install on AWS. But after removing them, it worked fine. And uh, I deployed my app. And my website was working great for all of eight hours and then I got a SQL database connection error. It turns out when you establish a connection to an AWS database, it will automatically time out after eight hours if it's not used. As you can see, the interactive timeout function here and that equates to, to eight hours. These are just issues that I never thought would occur in a million years and to get around this i just had to alter my code so it re-established the connection the last thing i'd sought was the domain so my website wasn't called website enveba you can buy domains from places like godaddy or google domains but then you have to transfer the certificate of ownership over to wherever you're hosting the website so to save that step i just did mine on aws my website was called rapid because like running fast is like running rapid yeah anyway uh, i tried like all these different variations on uh, the domain search to find any that are available for a decent price uh, and I found one called runningrapid.co.uk perfect but well, ideally when you set up a website you want the .co.uk and .com variation because you know you're hoping that people outside the UK are going to be using your website too but for some reason runningrapid.com wasn't available so I thought I mean who could be using that let's have a look who's using runningrapid.com I wonder some scumbag is reselling it for $2,800. There is such thing as domain reselling. I can't believe it. It's like sneaker reselling, but for, for domains. This person will have bought the domain for a year for $13. That is a 21,000% return on investment. I'm off to sell domains. As part of the CS50 course, you'll have done all your development on the CS50 code space. But once you finish all your development work and want to move on to your own projects, you need to move off this code space and do all of your development locally or on your own code space. In the CS50 course, they do tell you not to use the CS50 code space after you finish the CS50 course. However, it's so convenient, it's easy not to. Uh, and I was actually just doing all my coding on it after. And in this folder called data, I had all of my JSON files for fine-tuning my AI models. So of course one day I came to use those files and they'd all been deleted. I jumped straight onto GitHub support uh, and this is what they told me. He said, CS50 accidentally downgraded their organization causing soft deletion of their code spaces. 